thrown up on somebody. <laughs> Raise your hand if you've ever thrown up on somebody. I mean like projectile, like. Get ready. Hey, I have a secret to tell you guys. Uh, we went to 4-5 camp and Jeremy back here, he got totally thrown up on. He got totally thrown up on. How gross is that? But it was pretty funny watching it. All right, listen up. We're going to play a song for you. And here's how this song goes, okay? You got to do the motions. Watch these guys over here. They're going to show you how to do all of it, okay? We goes, I'm trading my sorrows. And I want you to go, boo-hoo, like this right here. Loud as you can. I'm trading my sorrows. All right. I'm trading my shame. I want you to cover your face like this. All right. Next one. Next one. Next one. Um, and then it says, I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. All right. The next one says, this is the fun one, okay? I'll give you $20 if you can make Jack gag, okay? It says... I'm trading my sickness, and I want you to make the most disgusting throw-up sound ever and go, Are you ready? I'm trading my sickness. Wow, that was that was not impressive. Let's try it again. Let's try it again, okay? I'm trading my sickness. That was better. That was better. I see a lot of weird looks. I see. I know. I get it. I get it. Throwing up on your friend isn't as fun as it used to be. Okay, it's cool. Um, and then the last one is I'm trading my pain, and I want you to point at your elbow and go, ah! <laughs> say, ow! All right. Hey, let's put it all together real quick, and then we'll jump into the song. So, I'm trading. Here we go. Trading my sorrows for you. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. Here we go. This is the fun one. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. Ow! And I'm sound awesome. You guys ready? Y'all got this? Let's do it. All right, we're going to stop. Uh, start off. This is a practice round, okay, just to get warmed up. Here we go. I'm trading my sorrows. And I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Here we go. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. And I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. You guys got it. Here we go. Sing yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. We sing yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Here we go. I am pressed but not crushed, persecuted, not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. I am blessed beyond the curse, for his promise will endure. That his joy is going to be my strength. Though the sorrow may last.
Yo, that was good. That was really good. All right. Let's kick this next one off. You guys know this song. Thank you. Thank you that you're a God who knows our names and that you call us to you. Father, open our hearts and our minds for what you want to say this evening through Jack. Um, we just love you. In Jesus' name, everyone said.
What up? Oh, wow. These stairs they could kill somebody. What's going on, y'all? That was so lame. How's it going? Seriously, you guys are like dead. Are you good? How is everybody? Oh, my gosh. Good. Where's the thingy? Guys, uh, I just want you to know that I think uh, after Blast, today is the first day that I actually had some like real energy. Anyone feel the same? Who was tired on Monday? Same, same. And then who was tired on Tuesday? Okay, and now we're here. So who's still tired? Fair enough, fair enough. Um, but uh, we're back. We're going to be back here um, every week. You know that. Garage is never going to end. We're going to do this till the end of time. Um, but you guys see this, that we're starting a new series. Shh. New series called Afterlife, right? And the reason we're starting this series is because we are two weeks away from Easter. Okay? Anyone know what Easter is? Uh, I, I mean, hopefully, maybe, somebody. Okay. Yeah, Easter is two weeks away, right? Two weeks away. And so we're starting this series about Easter and how there's parts of uh, the, the Bible, right? There are people in the Bible that knew Jesus while he was still alive, walking around before he was put on the cross and died, right? Before that happened, people knew Jesus. Then he was put on a cross, buried in a tomb for three days. And after three days, he came back to life. And there are people, there's a handful of people that know and met Jesus after that. And so that's what this series is about, is seeing how people have seen Jesus before he was, was crucified and after Jesus was crucified and rose again. So that's where we're at in this series. We're going to be here for just two weeks here this week and then next week. Um, so stick with us. If you're not here next week, I'm going to be very sad, and it's going to be really a big bummer. But uh, we'll, still, we'll, still, we'll still keep going. Um, let me ask you guys a question, though. How many of you... At some point in your life, might have been today, might have been yesterday, last week, beginning of the school year, something like that, have experienced or felt like they were unseen, they were an outcast, or they were, they were kind of left on the edge, they were fringe. How many of you guys have felt like that? Yeah? Okay. So here's the thing. That's, that's where we're going to start tonight. I have been in that place before. So I'll tell you about it. Um, when I was going to college, okay, actually I'll go, be, let's start sooner than that. Okay, I have three older siblings. So elementary school, middle school, high school, I, I went to school where they went. And so when I came into school as a, a new sixth grader or a kindergartner or whatever it was, basically everybody knew who I was already. Everybody knew who I was, who my family was, what we did, how we lived. They all knew me. College was the first time that I actually experienced being kind of on the edge, on the fringe, an outcast kind of life, right? I went to school in Oklahoma, and uh, if you don't know where Oklahoma is, you're not missing much. It's kind of boring, and there's nothing happening there. Tornadoes happen in, in there. That's why people want to leave the state. Um, that's the coolest thing about Oklahoma, honestly. I love tornadoes. Um, but here's the thing. So when I went to school, when I went to college, I, I didn't know anybody. I walked into this college campus, and I didn't know a single person. And there were thousands of people there. It was the first time I felt like I was really an outcast in my life. And so for the first two, three months, I was, I was circling with these friends, kind of hopping from group to group, trying to figure out who am I going to hang with while I'm here for four years. And so I'd sit in my room at night while I'm doing homework or laying in bed or whatever, and I'd wonder a few things. I'd wonder things like, well, does it even matter if I'm here? Like, would anybody actually notice if I was gone? Does it matter if I'm here? Does anyone even, like, care about me or care what I think? Maybe you thought, does anyone notice what I say? Right, we've probably been there in some way. It might be, maybe you moved here this last year. Maybe you're a new sixth grader this year, and, and it's, it was hard that first few months of school in middle school where you didn't know what middle school was like. 
Some of you eighth graders now are going to go into high school next year, and it's going to be a totally different world, and you're going to wonder if you even matter where you're at. That's where we're at in this series, because when, when we feel like we don't matter, it, it takes the joy out of our life. It takes the joy out of our life and the excitement out of our life. When we ask these questions, whether you have a good support system of like teachers or coaches or parents, right? Small group leaders that tell you you matter. It's good you're here. We're glad you're here all the time. Sometimes it's still hard to know, do I really matter here? Wherever that is. But here's the thing, with Easter coming up, which arguably is the biggest deal as a a Christian, a follower of Christ, right? Easter is the celebration of when Jesus died on the cross, for three days sat in his tomb, and then rose again. We're celebrating him coming back to life, defeating the grave. Easter is a big deal. And more specifically, with with Easter, there's, like I said, people that knew Jesus and walked with Jesus for three years and and saw him die and then saw him when he came back. And so in this series, we're going to look at what life looked like with Jesus walking around and then how life changed after when Jesus came back. Right, And so to, to go there, we're going to go into the New Testament. Obviously, this is where Jesus had his whole story written out. His life is in the, the first four books of the, Bible, or the New Testament. Right, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. There are four Gospels that we look at to say, oh, this is how Jesus lived. This is what he was doing while he was walking on earth. And there's a few people, obviously, we know about the disciples. We know about the Pharisees. But what you might not know is there's another person that was literally part of all of these different things that Jesus was doing while he was walking on earth. Her name's Mary Magdalene, right? Who's heard of Mary Magdalene? Anybody? Cool. So Mary, yeah, Mary's a really cool girl, woman, lady. She's really cool. The thing is, is we don't hear about her very often. She's not talked about like the disciples are. She's not talked about like the disciples are, who we know, right? Mary Magdalene was a different kind of disciple because she wasn't somebody that was always talked about. Nobody really knew what Mary Magdalene was doing with Jesus. But there's a few things that we do know about Mary Magdalene, okay? First thing is she loved Jesus and she followed Jesus so loyally. She was with Jesus all the time. They, they think that she was actually financially like taking care of Jesus' whole, you know, missions pro, uh, issues all, all over the place. When he would go all over the place, she was paying for all those things so that Jesus could do it. Mary Magdalene was a, a lady that had seven demons that were like called out of her. So she was a walking miracle. Mary Magdalene was a, a cool person to be around, but we don't hear about her that often. But around the story of Easter, we hear about Mary Magdalene all the time. She's there all the time. Out of all four of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, she is mentioned in all four of the Gospels as being at the cross when Jesus was crucified. In three of the Gospels, she was said to be at the tomb when Jesus was laid in the tomb. And then every Gospel, all four of them, say that Mary Magdalene was the first person that Jesus saw after he rose again. Talk about somebody who's important. She was there all the time. She was part of Jesus' life before he was crucified, before he was put into a tomb. And even as he rose again, the first person, she was so important. No other disciple was as close to Mary Magdalene as she was in the story of Easter. That's pretty crazy. But the thing is, is 
she didn't get the attention like the other disciples. She wasn't the person that was talked about at all. She was kind of left on the sidelines, put in the background, put aside. But she was there more than all the disciples were around Easter. And so John, one the fourth gospel, he, he writes about Mary Magdalene. And I'm just going to give you some backstory. When Jesus was, was put in the tomb and he was laid there for three days, and, and Jesus had told all of his disciples and Mary included, he said, I'm going to come back in three days. So that third morning comes and Mary Magdalene in the dark of the night goes to the tomb where Jesus was laid and, and looks in and sees that the, the stone that was put over the tomb is moved. And she looks in and she can't see Jesus' body. And she's freaking out. She, she, she doesn't immediately go, Jesus is back. She, she immediately thinks somebody's robbed this tomb and taken Jesus away. And so this is what it says in John 20, if you follow on the screen. It's a little bit here. All right, it says, Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over and looked into the tomb and saw two angels of white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. Keep going. We're going to roll through them. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and she saw Jesus standing there, but didn't realize that it was Jesus. So she looks in the tomb, sees two angels. They ask her, why are you crying? And she says, I can't find Jesus. If you've moved him, tell me where he is. She turns back around. She sees a guy that she thinks is the gardener. And she says this. And Jesus says this. Why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? Thinking it was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. And Jesus, standing right in front of her, says, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, which is the language they spoke. It's Rabboni, which means teacher. She turned around and realized when Jesus said Mary, she knew that was Jesus. So this story might not sound like a lot to you. But this story means a whole lot in the story of Easter. Because in this story, we see that Jesus makes a point that in Jesus' death, in the, in the great thing, in the awesome thing that he did, defeating death, defeating the grave, conquering everything that we can ever imagine, the first person he comes to see is a woman named Mary Magdalene. The first person he comes to see is a woman. Because back then, first century, people were living their lives and women weren't really cared for. They were kind of put on the side. They were set in the back. They were put away. They weren't trusted. They weren't reliable. You couldn't really count on a woman. That's just the way they lived. But Jesus when he came back, he came back to see her. That's pretty remarkable. It's pretty, probably, it makes her feel very important. That she matters. That's the point of this story that we see. That Jesus came back from life, or from death, to life after three days. Just like he said he was going to do. And he came back to see Mary. Mary. And at that point, Jesus made Mary matter. Jesus made Mary matter in the whole story of the resurrection. You could say that the resurrection, because of the resurrection, Mary knew that she mattered. Because of the resurrection, G uh, sorry, because of, the, uh, uh, because of the resurrection, Mary knew that she mattered. Mary knew that she had value when she started to talk to Jesus and realized it was him. He had done what he had said he was going to do. Right? When the world is telling Mary and, and women at the time that they don't matter, 
Jesus was telling her another story, that she does matter, that she is valued, that she is important. Because of the resurrection, Mary knew that she mattered. And at the end of the day, at Easter, when we go for Easter service, we know that Jesus can be taken so seriously because he did exactly what he was going to do, exactly what he said he was going to do, how he was going to do it. When he was telling Mary all this, you know that she could feel like she mattered. Her life now, right, she knew Jesus before he was put on the cross, put in the tomb. And now, after, when life came back, when Jesus came back, her life changed. Jesus mattered, or sorry, Mary mattered because Jesus said that. And just like when Mary was talking to Jesus and and learned that she mattered to Jesus, the same thing is for you. When we have those feelings that we talked at the beginning, does it even matter if I'm here? Do people listen to what I say? Do they care if I'm here? Jesus came back to life so that you matter. Because you matter. I have, I have some, some thoughts here. Nothing that we can apply really to ourselves this week, but really maybe some w- ways that we can think differently about Easter and how we think about ourselves and how we treat ourselves. So the first question I have you guys is, do you believe that you matter? Right, we, we said that at the beginning it's hard to actually know if I matter to myself. When I feel like people don't know who I am or what I'm doing or how I'm living, do you believe that you matter? Do you treat yourself like you matter? How do you treat yourself when no one looks? And band, you guys can keep come on up a few more questions. Do you allow people to to treat you as if you don't matter? Do you let people just walk over you all the time? Do you allow other people to treat you as if you don't matter? Do you treat others as if they matter? Are the people that you are, are around, are you treating them like they matter? Are there people that treat that you treat like they're more than you are? Are they better than you? Is these questions hitting you differently? Are there people that you treat like they don't matter at all? Maybe you, you think that you're you're so much better at some something that you, you put them in a different box than you are in. Easter here in this this series that we're going into is there's a difference between the way that we live before we knew Jesus and the way that we know Jesus after. Mary experienced that because she didn't feel like she mattered. And then after Jesus came back, she felt like she mattered. She was the first person to tell the disciples Jesus is alive I saw him so the only the last question I have maybe you've thought this question before but what would it look like if you started to treat yourself like you actually matter in God's eyes if you start to actually believe that you matter to God like Mary did when she saw Jesus, how different could your life be? In this series, we're gonna start looking at another guy next week about how his life was different when he was with Jesus before and after he rose again. Let's pray.
Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for the season of Easter that we're walking into, God. That you came back to tell us that we matter. You came back to save us so we know we matter. Help us to, to walk with you a little bit better this week and, and, and next week into Easter so that we can know that we do matter, God, and you have a plan for us. In your name we pray. Everybody said.
our powwows now. If you don't know where they're at, you can come to me. You are loved, prayed for, and accepted here just the way you are. We'll see you on Sunday.